Yeah, so that was uh, a difficult, difficult game against Atalanta. Uh, we kicked off our Champions League campaign um, against the Europa League winners from last season. Um, and look, it was always going to be difficult. It was always going to be a difficult game. Um, I've seen like um, just from the predictions of many Arsenal fans, some expected a draw, some ex- <laughs> hooks who big up hooks, obviously. Um, one of the most positive fans you could find and predicted a loss for us. So I understand that it was always going to be a difficult match. Um, and obviously going there without Odegaard um, means we lose one of our creative outlets um, in such a game. Um, and I think if he was there, maybe he could have helped us like find some openings. But look, we need to dissect this game quickly and just talk about what happened um for starters the lineup for me i think was was fantastic that's the exact lineup i would have wanted to see start against man city barring martinelli on the left i would prefer starting truss out on the left um so i thought he started a very very good lineup um i would have started like some other players because i wouldn't have taken this game um as seriously as i would take the man city game not that i'm underestimating a champions league game of course not um but i just felt we didn't need to start our best available lineup to beat Atalanta. And yes, we ended up drawing in the end, even with our best lineup starting. Um, but I think that had a lot to do with that had a lot to do with the fact that we didn't um think, take the game by the scruff of the neck. We didn't attack enough, we didn't press enough. Um, a lot of times we got the ball in our defensive third when we won the ball from Atalanta and we just cleared it forward. Um, which is something very unlike Arsenal. I think we were just probably afraid of making that same mistake we did against Porto last season when Saka didn't clear the ball and obviously they, Saka or Martinelli, I can't remember. Um, and then we got countered and, and, and Porto scored uh, the winner in the last minute. Um, so maybe that's still sticking in their heads. I'm not sure. Um, but given that it's the first game of the tournament, I just feel we should have taken a bit more risks. Um, so regardless of the lineup that started, I think we could have afforded to start some other players like Sterling and all, and we probably still would have won the game if we played a lot more um, adventurous and a lot more attacking and we actually tried to press them forward and take some risky passes in the middle. Um, But yeah, I had no issues with the lineup. Um, I would definitely like to see the same lineup start against City, again, barring Martinelli, um, who we are going to talk about. He's he's been having stinker after stinker. I'll be honest, I, I don't I don't rate this Atalanta team. I don't know why people overhype them. Yeah, they won the Europa League last season. They obviously beat Leverkusen, an unbeaten Leverkusen, uh, gave them their only defeat, and they smashed them 3-0 in the finals, obviously, um, thanks to an individual uh, Lookman performance. But I don't know. I just didn't feel like they were that great. Like I think they were giving us so much space to exploit. Um, they were impressing that well. A lot of their press just didn't seem... Um, that coordinated, I felt like we could have easily beaten that press and and put them in under difficult pressure. Um, but unfortunately, like our final third decision making um, was was just horrendous. Um, we tried playing a lot of long balls from Raya from the center backs, um, and I could understand why. Maybe because Atalanta were playing with a slightly high line, which we wanted to exploit. Um, Kai Havertz won a couple of long balls and and set up um, set the ball up for others, but. Um, so I, I understood the game plan, but I just don't think we executed that well. So if you're going to play on long balls like that, then you have to commit more people forward so you can win the second ball. Um, but if you're going to rely on building from the back, I understand why you'd only have one person up front and then you slowly build. We did neither yesterday. We did neither well, I should say. We tried doing the long ball thing, um, but I don't think we did it properly. Um, David Raya with that save, though. We've We've got to speak about that. Look, I was one of the people who was um, against the signing of Raya. Not necessarily against the signing of Raya, but I just didn't think we needed to go sign a goalkeeper and commit that 25, 27 million, how much ever it was. Um, when we had Ramsdale, who's been doing okay for us in his last two seasons. Not even okay, I, I, I lie. He was doing good for us over the last two seasons. Yeah, people will reference his mistakes, but over the course of the last two seasons that he kept for us, so basically the 21-22 uh, season and 22-23, I thought he was doing really well. Um, so I don't think I didn't think it was a position we had to strengthen, but now when you look back at it and you look at how incredible Raya has been, yeah, that, that's a mistake. Like that, that I hold my hands up, hundred percent. Raya was a fantastic, fantastic signing. He's not just an incredible keeper in terms of playing with his feet and building from the back. 
but he's also a fantastic shot stopper. He's incredible at collecting crosses. Um, an issue that Ramsdale had, um, I should say, um, with us. And many keepers have that in the Premier League. We've seen Vicario, who's um, infamous for not coming out of his line properly and collecting crosses, and that puts his team under a lot of pressure. Raya is probably one of the best keepers in the league at coming out and getting the ball. Um, and some of the saves he's been pulling have been phenomenal. That double save is probably one of the best saves I've seen from an Arsenal keeper in a long time. In a long time. I do remember, um, was it Chesney? I think Chesney pulled a double save against Liverpool uh, when we beat them at Anfield um, 2-1. I think that was 2012 when Van Persie scored that volley in the end. Um, I think it was Chesney. I could be wrong. Um, that's the last time I remember seeing such an incredible like save in, 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 in that period. Like It was just phenomenal. So he obviously kept us in the game. I do think it was a slightly soft penalty. I, obviously, Thomas Partey was pulling him. But I think once, uh, I think it was Ederson, once he got in the box, I think Partey kind of let go. Um, but obviously, he was looking for it and the referee ended up giving it. Fair enough. You cannot blame the referee here. I think Thomas Partey also should have been a bit more careful. Um, but in the end, when the penalty was given, David Raya stepped up. Because if Atalanta scored, the game was done. There was no way we were going to come back. Yeah, we probably would have come out a bit more. We would have attacked a bit more. But I think we were just too nervous. It was our first game back this season uh, in the Champions League. And we weren't um, as creative enough in, in finding solutions. So I think had they scored that penalty, it would have been done for us. We would have lost that game. Um, so obviously, David Raya saved us and got us that important one point. Um, and I think it'll be a vital one point in the course of things because our next two games in the Champions League are at home, right? Against PSG and Shakhtar Donetsk. So I do expect us to win both games um, despite the strong start PSG have had in the league. Oh, but it doesn't matter. We should de we should definitely, definitely be winning both games. Um, and that'll hopefully set us up in a good position in the league, in the table. Um but yeah, look, not, not the best of games. Um, I don't think... I, I will say this, though, because I've seen a lot of overreactions. People need to stop overreacting to some of these performances. Was it the best result? No, of course not. I predicted we'll go there and get a stinky 1-0 win. It didn't happen, unfortunately. It could have happened if Martinelli finished his chance. Yeah, we do need to speak of Martinelli before I speak about the overreactions. It's, what, 16 or 17 games now that he hasn't scored a goal? The guy needs to get out of his head. He's He's too low on confidence and I think he's forcing some of these shots he's forcing some of these finishes because he's desperately trying to get back on the score sheet and I think it'll be a lot easier if he just keeps things simple which is why Arteta needs to protect him and the way he protects him is by benching him now and just bringing him off bring him off the bench every single game every single game because the moment he comes off the bench and he gets that goal eventually and eventually he will get that goal back right He's eventually going to have that confidence. now. So when he does start him in one of the next few games, or whenever he starts him in the Premier League or the League Cup or whatever game he starts him in, Martinelli will now have that confidence that he's, he's, he's taken care of that, of that barrier, of that hurdle of not scoring for so many games. Because he'll come off the bench in one of those games, he'll score, he'll get that confidence, he'll get a good run, and he'll eventually start making simpler decisions when he's starting games in the Premier League or the Champions League. Because right now, I think he's just overthinking things. Like we've seen against Tottenham when he ran through, he should have 100% squared that ball to Saka first time. Instead, he tried to go for a finish. And even if he wanted to go for a finish, which I don't mind, but he should have gone a bit ahead, maybe cut past Van de Ven and, and got a better shot. Um, but he was just thinking too much in his head and he wanted to take it a bit early. Um, and then the same thing with the finish yesterday. Like I, I think he was slightly offside. So I think if he did score, they probably would have reviewed it and seen he was slightly offside and ruled the goal off. Um, but that doesn't matter because he didn't know that, right? And when he went to finish that chance, I think he just got too overexcited or or he rushed a shot and it ended up uh, getting skied over. Um, but I think if he just took his time, was patient a little bit, he probably could have slotted it down um, to the left of the keeper or maybe chipped the ball or something. But he should have made a lot, a much better decision there. Um, so yeah, if I were Arteta, I would just try to protect him a little bit. He just clearly lacks confidence. And the best way for him to get that confidence back is just to keep bringing him off the bench every single game for the next five, six, seven games. Um, so that he starts, so he comes on, he, because if he comes on when we are two, three in a lap, let's say in a Premier League game, 
he's probably going to have a lot more confidence because he knows now, even if I make a mistake, it's okay if I screw up because we're winning that game. But when he's starting a game and the score is nil-nil, I think he's just thinking, I don't want to take risks. I don't want to take on the fullback and then end up losing the ball. Or I don't want to like be patient with my finishes because we need to win that game. So he, he rushes these things. Um, or he overthinks some of these things. But when he comes on, let's say if we're winning 2-0 or 3-0, he's going to come on a lot more relaxed. And I think that'll give him confidence when he does end up uh, starting games. Uh, but I do agree with what Rice said yesterday. He said it to Ferdinand and Martin Keon that uh, he's a big player for us and we need him to get back to form. Um, if we are to challenge for the league, because if we get the Martinelli of two seasons ago, I think it's 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 curtains for a lot of teams. Because having Saka and Martinelli on the wings with that kind of form from two seasons ago, brah, we we will destroy many many teams, including big teams. Um, but yeah, he needs to get on that form back asap. Until then, it's Trossard starting on the left for me every single game. Um, but yeah, coming to the overreactions, and that's the last bit for me um, in this video. Um, I've seen a lot of people just go over the top um, talking about why we probably will not win anything this season because of this, because of the way we're playing. Oh, we've missed Odegaard. It's the season is over for us. They said the same shit before the Tottenham game, which to me was extremely surprising because I said it in Sa on South Show. I think even with Odegaard and Rice out, there are probably only one or two Spurs players max that I would have in a combined 11. We still had the much stronger lineup. So I don't understand why people were that nervous. Um, the same comes to the Atalanta game. People were like ruling us out before the game. Um, and I think people are really going over the top just because we drew the game. Remember, we have been used to a footballing style that revolves around Odegaard, right? All our build up, all our final third decisions come through Odegaard, who, in my opinion, is the best player we have. When someone like him of that caliber and of that value to our team is out, it's going to take some time for the team to adapt to playing without him, right? That won't come in a game or two or three. I think we're going to struggle for four to five games. Not, no, I don't, I'm not saying we'll draw four to five games or we'll lose this four to five games. I think we'll find ways to win, but we'll have to win ugly until we figure out a system or until we figure out a style of play that works with the current players we have. As I said, the lineup that started yesterday against Atalanta, in my opinion, that's perfect, right? The only difference I, I would make, again, is Trossard instead of Martinelli. But Jesus and Havertz is the front two. I think that's a good lineup with, with Partey and um, Rice behind them. But obviously, neither Rice, sorry, neither Havertz nor Jesus can create the way Odegaard does. Which means we'll have to eventually start changing the way we link up between Saka, between Havertz, the way Havertz drops, the way Havertz like makes those runs in the box. We'll have to eventually start fig figuring out a different style of play until Odegaard is back in the team until we get both him and Moreno back. Um, so there is going to be an adjustment period. We saw that in the first half of last season, right? We were trying to accommodate Havertz in the middle, which was a horrible, horrible decision. I think Ar uh, Arteta was just trying to force it. But despite playing like crap for the first half of the season, we were getting wins. We were basically grinding wins, like the Crystal Palace 1-0, the Everton 1-0, the, the Brentford 1-0, the Luton 4-3. We were grinding wins. We were getting through the line. And then the moment we found that system that works in the second half of the season, after we went to Dubai and came back, we started playing proper attacking, free-flowing football. And we were destroying and dismantling teams. And we ended on 89 points by the end of the season. So people need to stop overreacting. The fact that we have such a strong, incredible defense I think that's a very, very good sign, which means we just need one or two very good opportunities in a game to fall to the correct players like Havertz, who's in form, like Saka, like Trossard, not to Martinelli, obviously. And as long as we get those chances, as long as we continue being strong and set pieces, and as long as our defense stays strong and we're able to keep all our back four players fit, I think we'll be able to grind out a lot of results until Odegaard is back. And we'll probably figure out a system in a couple of weeks that works for us and we'll start playing good attacking football even before Odegaard comes back. Let's assume he's out for like two or three months. I think before he comes back, in three or four weeks, we should hopefully establish a good attacking style that now revolves around Havertz and Jesus, let's say, as the front two. Or maybe Trossard and Havertz as the front two if, if that Jesus thing doesn't work, if Martinelli picks up his form or if Sterling um, gets around the games and starts performing on the left wing. Um, so people need to relax, stop panicking. It's, it's going to take some time. We're going to grind out some ugly wins. Um, City, the best team in the country, struggled to adapt when Rodri and KDB were out in the first half of the season. 
they I think they didn't win a single game when both of them were out last season, right? Um, and obviously, like once KDB came back in the second half, we saw the impact he made instantly. But some of the results they grinded out in the first half, even when Rodri was available, like that Newcastle win when Alvarez uh, pulled that that shot in the first half, I remember, um, and they got the one nil win. They had to grind out some results, and there are some games where Rodri w- went missing, and they managed to, to they could they didn't manage to win, right? Whether it was the the Wolves game that they lost two one, the Arsenal game that they lost one nil, um, obviously some of the draws they had, even with Rodri in the team, like Chelsea the four four draw, or I think the the Tottenham three all draw. Um, so we've seen that this is the best team in the country, one of the best Premier League teams we've ever seen, the best dynasty probably in the Premier League, and they have struggled to adapt when they had their two best players out. Um, so it only makes sense that we will have a coping period. That doesn't mean fans should overreact and say the season is over, this is why it messed up. People act like we lost the game. We've only conceded one goal this whole season, and that one goal came after we got the red card against Brighton. So people need to relax. We have time. Let's take it one game at a time. Obviously, we have a very, very difficult game coming up. Probably one of our most difficult games that we're going to play this season because it's at the Etihad. Um, and I think if we defend the way we defended against Spurs and the way we defended against Atalanta, barring the 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 the, the penalty that we gave away, I think we can get a result against City. And I'll say it right now. If we end up getting a draw against City, I'm not going to be mad at that. Because they still have to come to our ground. We still stay within touching distance behind them, like two points behind them. Um, and they obviously have some other difficult games that they have to play as well, right? Like, we have to back ourselves to be able to beat them again at the Emirates. We have to also back, um, hope that they will end up dropping points away from home against maybe Spurs or, or Liverpool, whoever it is. So, um, right now, we need to lean on our defense. Um, and we just need to give our attack time to adapt to a style or to adapt to to the kind of football that we're going to play without Odegaard until he's back. And that will take some time. It will not get fixed in a day or two or in, in, a, in a game or two. So people need to be patient. Um, I still think we can challenge for the... Not challenge, sorry. I still think we can win the league. Um, I don't know about the Champions League because it, clearly it requires a lot of experience. Uh, we've seen it yesterday. I think if a team like Liverpool or City go to play away against Atalanta, they probably come back uh, with a win because their players have that experience and they know that they can take risks. They know that they are better than the other team. Um, our players still need to adapt that, and that'll come with time. So I'm not that fussed about that. But for me right now, um, the focus is on the next game, which is Man City, and I think we can win the Premier League. So yeah, let's hope we get um, our attacking form back soon. Um, and look, disappointing first game, as I said, against Atalanta, but I think we can win against PSG and we can win against Shakhtar. And if we do, if we win these next two home games... Yeah, that changes the whole perspective. We suddenly have like seven out of nine points. I'm pretty sure by that time, we'll probably be like in the top eight. Uh, but we have got to win those two games. No excuses, no draw, um, no shitty penalty, no shitty red cards, nothing. We've got to win our next two Champions League home games. Um, and right now, obviously the next game, which is Man City, we need to make sure we get a result um, out of that game. Anyways, until then... Please like and subscribe the video, guys, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.